This question becomes much easier if we can figure out very early on what it's actually testing. If we're just going by sound, or we think it's about like the tense of the verb, we're gonna have more trouble. We still might get it right, but we're gonna have more trouble along the way. Most of the time, when we look at choices like this, where we have a verb, and then that verb is in different tenses, the first thing that we should check is verb agreement. So this is what it means to predict the question. It means to kind of like look at the answer choices and to have a plan and then use that knowledge to kind of start your process. And, and you might need to change your plan, but at least we've got something to think about and we're not going into this sentence blind. Because if I know that it, it's probably about verb agreement, I need to think in terms of singular and plural, right? Verbs, just like nouns, can be singular and plural. And then when we have a singular verb, it needs to match with a singular subject. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So what you might want to do is start the process by looking at the verbs in the choices and just labeling them. Are they singular or are they plural? And remember, um, generally speaking, singular verbs end in S. So choice A is singular because spawns ends in S. Now choice B doesn't end in S. Choice C kind of does because the word that we're really concerned with here is has right? Has is the singular. Uh, have would be the plural. But then D also kind of is this weird thing. It's not spawnings, I guess. So that's makes means it's plural. Well, in this case, no. Both spawned and spawning are kind of different tenses. And this singular plural thing only really exists in English in the present tense. Um, words that are just like things that are happening right now with the two exceptions of has and have and was and were. Again, they follow the rule. S ends in S means it's singular. So these other ones, it's not that they're plural, it's, it's that they're neither. They're kind of like both, really. You know, they could be plural, they could be singular, it really just depends. And we, and we can think of different situations where that's true. Right? We could say, um, spawn is such a weird word to use, um, but let's see. Let's look at this the way that it's written here and, and see. It's all of these inventions. Is that singular or plural? Well, that's pretty clearly plural, right? It's multiple inventions. So we could say all these inventions spawned new industries. That sounds good, and that is the right answer. It would be weird to say these inventions spawns new industries. Right? We would say these inventions spawn, without an S, new industries. These inventions have spawned new industries. Now, if we changed it to this invention, one invention, this invention, then we would say spawns, or we could still say spawned new industries. Right? This invention spawns. So here's my proof. That a word like spawn, it's not that it's singular or plural, it's that it kind of functions as both, and that's what makes it right here. So the reason this is so important is if we're thinking about the tense, we might get this right. Maybe that tense feels right to us. But the real reason that it has to be the past tense is that the present tenses are wrong. The singulars don't match with the plural. And so that helps us because a lot of times with tense, it, we don't really know. It could go either way. And so we need another reason to decide which choice is best. And the verb agreement reason is usually cut and dry. So that's why I always say start by thinking about singulars and plurals. And then if that leaves you a couple answers, then you can start to think about the tense and which one is better. And in this case, I guess, you know, D is also in the mix, but I think D just sounds terrible. So that's why B ends up being right. And so there is a little bit easier of a choice for us. It's either a really bad tense or one that just works. So yeah, that order of operations, that method of predicting the question can help you get your brain on the right track so you can think about the right rules and get the right answer. That's the goal.